Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the Yongnu 16 millimeter lens. It is an f 1.8 lens and it is for the Sony E mount. And of course, I believe Yongnu makes mounts for other cameras or wherever for their own lenses. But I use the Sony Alpha 6100 as well as the Sony ZV E10, which you're looking at right now. And right now on the Sony ZV E10, I'm using the Sigma 16 millimeter lens that is a f 1.4, whereas the Yongnu is a f 1.4. So you are going to lose a little bit of, uh, I would say, blurry background or wherever as far as between the, the f1.4 on the Sigma and the f1.8 on the actual Yongnu lens. But other than that, I can't rant about this uh, lens enough to tell you to go ahead and purchase it. There will be affiliate links down in the description to this lens as well as their own 11 millimeter lens. I'm going to pick that up in the future. The only reason why I went with the 16 millimeter from Yongnu First, it was because it was getting delivered in two days. The 11 millimeter apparently is a really popular lens because again, it's around the same price point as this one. And um, it wasn't getting delivered until like August and I didn't wanna wait anymore because every time I have to stream, I take off the Sigma 16 millimeter lens and put it over there on my live stream camera, which again is the Alpha 6100. And then when I need to record videos over here or do like talking head videos or even while I'm live streaming, again, link in the description to my kick channel where I live stream, where I do product unboxings, all that stuff. Sometimes I do that live or just content creator education. I come over to my YouTube studio and all of it's running into OBS. So I have to take the 16 millimeter from Sigma off the Alpha 6100 and bring it over here. And I was just tired of switching lenses because I already have to switch the lens on the Alpha 6100 because that's the one I use, the camera that I use for thumbnails typically and product, I would say photos and all that stuff, photography, everything. I use that camera. So sometimes I slap on the Sigma 30 millimeter lens that I picked up from KEH, which is a used camera company, like a little website or wherever that sells you know, camera lenses, camera bodies, all of that stuff used. And I highly recommend them because I've gotten the Sigma 30 millimeter lens as well as other products from them and haven't been, um, I would say, dissatisfied yet with their care of used products and their classification for used products and everything like that. They just highly recommend them. I'm not affiliated with them or anything, but I'll leave their website down in the description as well. Alongside of to some content creators out there who has reviewed this lens in depth, in comparison to the Sigma lens and just, you know, went over and scrutinized the lens from a photography and videography standpoint. So you know what you're getting or wherever when you're purchasing this so you can make an informed decision. But I'm talking about it from a standpoint of somebody who is in the realm of getting camera gear on a budget, who doesn't have, you know, the money to get the Alpha 6700 or something like that. And I barely had the money to get the Alpha, the Sony ZV E10 and I have the Sony ZV1 and I have the Alpha 6100. When I got that camera, I even got it lower than the Sony ZV E10 because it has a busted audio port on it. And so I just use it for photography and filming B-roll and other things like that. And also live streaming. And I think that this lens, even on the older models of the APS-C line from Sony, is still going to be a very, very good competitive, I would say, prime lens for you to use as a webcam lens, in my personal opinion. It does have a filter size of 58, so it's not going to be able to use the newer ND filter and the one fourth, uh, I would say, blackness combo that I use on the Sigma lens. So I'm not going to be able to really show it off in that scenario. That's what you're looking at right now. And I've been using that ND filter from newer for about a month now, and I'm happy and pleased with it. I've used it outside and stuff for recording and everything. But inside or wherever what it allows me to do with that ND filter with that one fourth you know blackness filter on top of it is that for one they're com combo together and for two I can leave it on the lowest setting for the ND filter and still have a f1.4 inside and have my shutter speed be 1 over 50 be a little bit overexposed for the Sony ZV E10 because I shoot in HLG3 and the camera LUTs that I use is from a dude named Paul Leeming. I'll leave him linked in the description to his website. He has camera LUTs for pretty much any single camera out there, but they're like 30 bucks or wherever. I think if I remember correctly, when I purchased it for the Sony line of cameras or wherever, and it includes all the LUTs you would need for your color picture profiles, if you're into that kind of thing, 
and maybe you have the Sony Alpha 6100 or a comparable camera that doesn't have color picture profiles. They have creative styles inside and he has things for that. And they both, the creative styles and the actual Leaming Let or wherever for the actual color picture profiles, he has little PDF booklets or whatever instructions that will tell you simply and easily how to set it up. And a noob like me that doesn't know anything about cameras, who's only had them for about three years and working with them and looking up tutorials and how to set up everything or whatever for all of my cameras, it was very bare bones. And, and when I say bare bones, I mean like it was very basic for me to understand how to use them. I've incorporated them into OBS because I record everything in OBS because I have a top down camera. I'm recording the, you know, the audio, all that stuff, wherever strictly into OBS. So it cuts out any need to, you know, really do that much work in post for recording videos. And on top of that, I'm able to, you know, have this set up and talk to my chat while I'm live streaming on kick to you know keep it a more immersive and really unique stream especially when i go to do unboxings or record videos live so again this lens is just going to really help out with that the only thing i would say is that even if it has the 1.8 however f-stop it's completely fine you're going to still get a blurry background it's going to be great the only thing I would still recommend doing is getting that newer ND filter for this thread size for this uh, lens. And I'll leave it linked in the description. Of course, all the links are going to be affiliate links, but I'm going to pick one up wherever for this lens and, and in the near future, I would say, because it's going to allow you to still keep that F 1.4. Like I was talking about, like I can keep that F 1.4 for the Sigma. It's going to allow you to keep that F 1.8 for the Yang new by you know keeping it on the lowest stop or wherever and you're not going to have to change anything on the sony alpha 6100 when i use this lens i'm still shooting in at a one over 50 you know the color temperature is still 5600 kelvin the iso set to 100 and everything the f-stop again is one 1.8 and if i had that in in d filter wherever on top of it it's going to you know allow me to turn down the lights or wherever a little bit more in the studio but it's also still going to allow me to keep that blurry background that everybody wants with a lens like this and again for 250 dollars and sometimes even cheaper i picked it up for 288 and the same thing is being said for the 11 millimeter from yang new again for that price point the only other comparable one for the 11 millimeter from yang new is going to be the 11 millimeter from sony and that one is like 500 something dollars whereas the Sigma lens 16 millimeter is going to come in around 300 and something. And this 16 millimeter lens is going to come around, like I said, below 300 and potentially below even 250. This is a still. And the only people I see talking about this lens or whatever is the photography and videography people. And, you know, they scrutinize the lens, like I said, in comparison videos and stuff. And it's not the best lens out there for photography and videography or whatever. But let's be honest, you're streaming on Twitch, YouTube, Kick, whatever it may be. You're doing talking head videos like this one. Nobody's going to really notice those issues that those people are talking about in those kind of scenarios or whatever, especially if you just picked up the Sony uh, ZV-E10 or maybe you're looking at getting the Sony ZV Mark II or maybe you're getting the Sony 6700 somehow. You got your hands on that and that's a really expensive camera and you're like, well, I just kind of want to get a budget lens these two lenses the 16 millimeter from yang new and 11 millimeter from yang new are going to be really really good i would say options out there for you to get and yes there's reputable brands out there like sigma and all that stuff and there's a reason why people you know want to get them and everything like that and they recommend them to depth or wherever the sigma trio and all that stuff i i, I get all that you know what i'm saying i have the 30 30 millimeter and the 16 millimeter from sigma those are fantastic lenses i can concur with people but Using this, like I said, just for live streaming on your live streaming camera. I mean, as long as in my personal opinion, you don't go with the the Alpha 5100 or something like that along those lines, because those are not 4K and a lot of them don't have clean HDMI. But for clean HDMI cameras and you're going with the Alpha 6100, I would say check this lens out first before you even look at the Sigma 16 millimeter lens, especially if you're able to get a really good deal on this Alpha 6100. Like I said, I got it cheaper than the Sony ZV-E10 because it had a busted audio port. And it's really good just for photography, for thumbnails and everything like that, and for streaming. And the picture quality that you get out of this, 
again for sometimes under 250 dollars at this focal length and like i said the 11 millimeter sometimes is coming under uh i would say 300 dollars why are you still watching the video <laughs> check out the links in the description to these lenses or whatever i'm gonna pop this one on real quick so you can see for the sony zv e10 how it looked all right so now i put the young new lens on and you can take a closer look at the nd filter that i was talking about from newer and this one just slides or wherever i just leave it all the way turned over at the openness setting or wherever and i just leave it on you know the the lens or wherever but you can see right there uh the newer brand and stuff on what it's called but like i said this lens it's smaller than the sigma 16 millimeter lens in my personal opinion and on top of that it doesn't weigh as much as the sigma lens and like i said it's going to have its drawbacks when you start really comparing i uh, doing comparisons or whatever to you know more expensive lenses of course this is still like budget level entry level uh lenses and of course i'm even more ex overexposed i would say for this shot because i am shooting in hlg3 but i'm even more expo overexposed because i'm no longer using the nd filter which was keeping it leveled but at the same point in time this is the way it looks i'm super happy with this or wherever it looks super clean it's like i said going to be fitting in your camera bag a little bit easier if you're you know traveling or something with this and like i said there's nothing wrong with the 16 millimeter lens from sigma it's just that at that price point for 300 and something dollars these barely go on sale and seeing the price fluctuations again for under 250 dollars if you can get it i think this is going to be a steal for a lens in my personal opinion yang new i think killed it here and there are some other i would say APS-C line uh lenses that are coming out i think newer just dropped their own version of a 27 millimeter or something like that 23 millimeter I, don't, I forget what it was but i'll leave it linked in the description just in case you want to take a look at it as well but it's an autofocus aps-c lens and it's coming in below 200 dollars so again there are going to be drawbacks from you know obviously the quality price to performance people say you should get a lens that costs just as much as your camera etc but again if you're already paying 500 and something, God forbid, maybe 600 and something, maybe even 700 and something for the Sony ZV-E10, and you're like, I got it on sale, Black Friday, you know, a clearance sale, whatever it is, maybe used from KEH because, you know, they sell, you know, used cameras and everything. Um, I just don't think that you can go wrong with this, especially, again, if you're just sitting there, not even doing talking head videos for YouTube, and you're just live streaming and you have a sony alpha 6100 possibility of picking one of those up or the sony alpha 6400 or something like that possibly picking that up wherever you used and you're getting a really good deal and all you have god forbid is the kit lens or whatever to go for it even though it's still good outside the kit lens inside is not really good or whatever for live streaming and talk ahead videos because you have to crank your your lights so high and it's going to just in incorporate more heat into the room or wherever and you're going to have to get really good quality lights on top of that so to skip all that you're going to want to get a prime lens and that's why a lot of people say for talking head videos and streaming get the sigma lens but i i dare say that get the young new instead that's just my personal opinion. The proof is right in front of you. With that being said, hopefully you guys learned something today. Hopefully this information was helpful to y'all guys. If you want a more deep dive into these lenses from a camera person's point of view, then again, those relative links are down in the description. And obviously the links to Amazon or wherever for these lenses or wherever are down there as well. There are affiliate links that help out the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, hopefully this was informative for somebody out there. I'm not the best at this kind of thing or wherever as far as like camera gear goes, but I wanted to share some light on this lens because I think this is a fantastic find. And again, especially if you can get it for under $250. With that being said, y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. If you're new to the channel and you liked what you've seen and you want to see actually more product reviews from me, then a product review playlist should be popping on screen. And you can also subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with any other product reviews I do in the future. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours. And deuces, everybody. Much love.